Hey guys, it's Willie here, uh, doing a little pre-ramble video. Just letting you know that um, Wizards will be going to the Way Gaming this week. It's Friday at 7 p.m. till 12 a.m. There's free food, free tournaments including Hearthstone, Nintendo Switches with Smash, Warhammer, any other tabletop games you want to play, Age of Sigmar, Infinity, Drop Zone, Ping Pong, all that stuff. And did I say free food? Just come on by, check us out, we'll be there running games. Uh, learn how to play some kill teams for the kill team tournaments that are upcoming and we're also going to be showing off some new stuff including the new age of corn age of sigmar corn that we just talked about in this or going slash am going to be talked about in this video so if you liked this video or like anything you hear from us there are links down in below to show you where to go for that stuff if not we hope you enjoy this video and thank you for de uh, dealing with us when we try to fix this mess and Get these videos out as soon as we can to you. Hey, we are back with part two. Wait, was that in there? Yes. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so again, we got Bryce and Glenn. Sorry, guys. My my weekend was a three-hour conversation about what happens if we put it put mines inside of chickens and sent them into the enemy lines, and the most intelligent word that came out with, of that was open the farm bay doors. Yes. <laughs> yes, the world just breaks over there. <laughs> that's, that's, corn would be proud. <laughs> Detto chickens. Activate. I gotta do that in our D&D &E game next. next time <laughs> open the someone, farm bay doors. Next time we open, find a barn. <laughs> Buy more chickens, except for we're not feeding it to the juggernaut. No. Right. You didn't yet, Will. What? Murder. Yes, I have. You done it? Yes. Oh, I want to hear after the podcast. So, we start off with the big Papa Bloodthirster himself, which a photo will be in the link description because... Scarbrand? Scarbrand. Scarbrand. Hates doors and hates outside, so he stands in the door frame. Stands in door frames. Where he hates it less. Uh, our friend Brody. Scarbrand doesn't kill steel. Yeah, he is a respectful member of society. <laughs> yeah, so our friend Brody, um, he painted a copy for me. He painted. It looks good. Yeah. I like all the bone look on it. Yeah, he did a pretty good job. Just to poke fun at him, I uh, send photos where it's like a hard to swallow pill, and it says the model's not done until the base is. Ooh. And he's like, I don't do bases. I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll do it. You know I don't. So I, I finished the base on it. I added some blood effects to so the So you did the models, what you're saying? I did, I, he did the hard part. He did like the big chunk of it. I just chungus. built it. He beat the Yeah, he did the big chungus. Big chungus. I just did the uh, basing and blood effects. Hmm. Yeah, I did the blood effects on the axes. It's slaughter and, and, and uh, carnage. They have to be what covered What time is blood. it? Slaughter time. Hey. It's high noon. So oh, back off with that high noon garbage. Um, Scarbrand. Him and two other models in this codex got entirely redone compared to the old one. Scarbrand in the past, how he used to work was, and he still kind of works the same here, is the more he gets hurt, the more his abilities go up because he gets pissed off. In the old codex, it used to be you get a select to do one thing each turn, which they kind of brought over into here as some abilities. And when he got it to a lower one, he could do all of them. So he got to reroll, tr re -roll basically everything, do massive amounts of mortal wounds to everyone around him, and attack still, all before you basically did your combat phase. They kind of chilled him out, so you need those special buffs and abilities and your, your battalion, your chapters, because he's not stuck to a, he's not stuck to a specific chapter. Just like with Space Marines, some ca named characters will be specific uh, t uh, like tribes and stuff. Karmagoth Ghoul or whatever that name guy is, the one on the cover that you just see here right now. Him, he has is the only one in this book that is specific, and he's to the the Gortide, and he gets some bonuses for Gortide units. And so Scarbrand, how he works now, he is fourteen wounds, a movement of eight, four save, and a bravery of ten, like every other demon hero. <coughs> Excuse me. His missile weapon is a roar of total rage, which, when playing this game, we actually got into quite a bit of a, a confusal here in how this works. So Scarbrand has a base ability for all his attacks, where you do it out of the combat, you do it out of combat step. 
Hmm, that's interesting. So he's got like a unique set of fighting rules. Yeah, it's weird. We are like, do you do it like every phase at any time, or does it just on your turn? So we don't. What'd you find out? Like, what does it say? Read, read the read the subtexting to me. So this is how it reads. Okay. Uh, this big chunk is on most of them too. Got it. Do not use the attack sequence for an attack made with the roar of total rage. Instead, pick one enemy unit that is in range of the attack and roll the number of dice shown up on the damage table above. For each plus four, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. So at zero to three hits, his roar of total rage only does one. Slaughter has a number of five, and Carnage has a five plus. Okay, I know how it works. Okay, it's not saying you do it in the other person's combat phase. It's saying that the way this works is you do this instead of your combat phase. Uh, so it does so first? It, it occurs in the combat phase, just like everything else. But, can but you instead choose? of rolling normal combat, you do that. So is it you can do it at any time, or do you have to do it right then? I'm assuming, like, read the very, very beginning again. Because that was our problem. Was like, can I do it at any time during the combat phase, or can I, does I have to do at the beginning or at the end. It looks like it occurs when you nominate him for his attacks. Yeah, so it says, do not use the attack sequence for an attack. No. Yeah, but th that's not your. That's not the combat phase sequence. The attack sequence is uh, how you go through attacks yeah. with that particular character. This one says, do not use the attack sequence for an attack made by Carnage. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, so it's basically don't use the, the hit to wound rolls for this sequence. You have to do it as it says below. I think it says the same thing in the Stormcast Axe Boys. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll have to see. Above. I can't remember. Here's the here's the new big special rule Scarbrand gets. This is the thing that will stop you from hopping in turn one and make you bubble around him and then moving out of the way because you can't move through friendly units in this game you know, unless you have flying, which he doesn't because he has no wings. Scarbrand has wings. They're just ripped to shreds. Oh, he can't fly? No. Corn literally I didn't know took that. his prized parrot, clipped its wings, and said, "Go, go away and kill things," because he tried to kill him, and almost did. So um, this is what his new special rule is: instead of choose a bunch from like his last one, from the second battle round, if this model, if the model is on the battlefield and did not attack in at least one of the combat phases of the previous battle round. When you look up a value on the model's damage table, the model is treated as having suffered 13 wounds. So after turn one, the battle phase... So after, yeah, after the first turn, if he hasn't attacked, or any other phases after that he hasn't attacked, when you go to look up what you have to roll to do the ability, you look at the highest amount of damage possible on the table. He doesn't suffer the wound, he just acts as if he did. Hmm. Interesting. Because uh, there's a there's a big clarification to have there. Because if you read this and you're kind of new, you might say, okay, well, I didn't attack, so what? He just hurts himself really badly, and he now has thirteen on him. It's like no. It just he treated it as if he did. Because on a thirteen plus for damage, this, his roar of total carnage is five. He has nine on slaughter and a th one up for carnage. He, carnage is cool. Carnage is sick. This is your unit killer. Do not use an attack sequence. Said roll a dice. The target unit suffers eight mortal wounds if the roll is equal to or greater than the carnage value shown on the table above. If the roll is a natural six, the target unit suffers 16 mortal wounds. Uh, what? Yep. I know it's like a risk because you got you got to get that six. But what? Yep. <laughs> 16? Oh, I... If you get that six, you'll squad wipe. Gra granted, it's a really low chance to actually achieve that six, so it is a very oh, when unlikely you can make re -roll thing. Things, it's amazing. I know, but you still have to get a six. We scrunched. We I had to. I went to go get food, and we were, and the guy took over for my turn. He charged two of those uh, crypt guard like demon princes that the night haunts have. Uh. I'm really sorry, I can't remember what they're called. They have the giant glaives, and they look like skeletal demon princes jumping. Anywho. They're a little bit smaller. Yeah. He charged a unit, the two-man unit of it, uh, and wiped them out by rolling two sixes. Yeah, but that's him. <coughs> yeah, he can most definitely destroy those. Yeah. Uh, give me one second, though. And then last but not least, in Capable Wrath, you can reroll charge rolls for this model. That's pretty good. Rerolling charge rolls is nothing to snort at. 
And he is still 400 points from going on from the last game. See, that's big Papa Scarbrand. Every other guy is going to be quick because there are a lot of just um, copy and paste things. A little bit of tweaks, but... Yeah. Uh, all the Bloodthirsters have the exact same, excluding Scarbrand. Scarbrand's the only one that has a set movement property just because wings is not a thing on him. Uh, all the Bloodthirsters also, the more they get hurt, the stuff their their stuff drops. Um, Unfretted Fury, it's the same thing. Uh, command ability got better, fully within 16 inches. They can uh, they can uh, pile in if, if they're six inches away from an enemy unit instead of just three. And it has to be Corn Demon. Land Rebels, that's the same. Hurts people. Drawn in for the kill. At the start of the enemy movement phase, pick one enemy unit within three inches of the model. That unit cannot retreat. So instead of coming towards you, because you hit them with a the whip and they get pulled, they just have they can't retreat anymore. Instant Rage, the one with the Great Axe, got a huge buff in this edition. He used to be crap in the last one. I can only take him to fill in a slot to make your battalions. Fun to play with, not to eat. Um, of course, on page 105. He has Outrageous Carnage. If the unmodified wound rule for an attack made with this model is a 6, each enemy unit within 8 inches of the model suffers the number of mortal wounds shown on the damage table above, in addition to oh. any normal damage. Those monsters you're talking about are called the Mortigeists. Yeah. And I do know for a fact Mortigeists hit like trucks. They do. They are spoop. <coughs> That's why I kill them instantly. But yeah, so, at full health, every time you roll an actual 6 to hit, swinging with Five attacks, possibly going up to about nine or ten on any sixes. You do four mortal wounds plus d6. It's not bad either. Yeah. Rage Unbound. You can reroll hit rolls of ones for attacks made by this model if the charge move in, if it charge moved in the same turn. That's not bad either. Wow. Yep. And its command ability. Uh, if you do pick a friendly model that the command ability, you until the end of the phase, you can reroll charge rolls for friendly core demon. Only within 16 inches of the model when the charge roll is made. So, when you make the roll with them to charge, they have to be wholly within 16 inches of them. They can't do it before he moves. Or, yeah. And you just have your basic bitch Bloodthirster. Not much change there. He just gets a Rune Crown, so he lets you add two to the unbinding spells for models. Yeah. I can read. Can attempt to unbind one spell in the enemy hero phase as if it was a wizard. In addition, add two to the unbinding rolls. For this model, in addition, this model can attempt to dispel one endless spell at the start of your hero phase in the same manner as a wizard. Of course, he has his hell breath, where you do a number of damage, kind of like the land rebels. His command ability is uh, they can reroll hit rolls for attacks made with demon corn, friendly corn demons. Friendly. Not not uh, not all. Any so we won't have br he heads hitting bricks anymore. Ah, why do I keep fighting your core army? Why do you benefit from all my shit? It was really funny the first battle when you're like, "What mark are you?" And I went, "Mark of corn." What does that mean? I pick up the corn keyword. What does your book say? All corn units. It's just the two banner bros staring Ooh. at each other on the hill while everyone's fighting on the ground. Yeah, that's pretty much what it was, and all of us were getting every single other buff, so it really just came down to whose units were slightly tougher. That was, yeah, who got lucky with the dice roll. Mm-hmm. Skull Taker. Then they had it was his... a cool way to fight, though. you yeah. got to admit that. It was really funny was when fun. we marched out both of our banners onto the field, and we're like, okay, if I come in range of your banner, we share buffs. If you come in range of my banner, we share buffs. If our banners get overlaid, because of the way the rule books word it, we stack. Which yep. was so weird to fight someone while stacking buffs. And we, 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 I did some of the like calculation. It was like Civil War breaking out. Yeah, I did some of the calculation. You basically, we stacked the reroll to one, like, five times. So we basically said when two banner bros are together, we basically just made reroll everything. Because <laughs> it's like, well, he got up there. Might as well do something about it. Exactly. Right. Skull Taker, they put a picture of the unit in every war scroll even with the stuff on their website so you can see what they look like so you're not confused for a new player and they use the new skull taker model in the book too he got changed just a little he's slightly better he was good to begin with he is superhero killer he has five wounds a five inch move a four plus save and ten bravery 
He is armed with the Slayer Sword. One itch, three attacks, three hit, three to wound, minus one, three damage. The new ability that they replaced on all blood letters. The Capitating Blow, or Strike. If the unmodified hit roll of an attack made with the Slayer Sword is a six, the attack inflicts three mortal wounds in, on the target in addition to any normal damage. For most blood letters, it just does like it does one mortal wound. Uh, Hero's Bane. You can reroll hit and wound rolls for attacks made by this model that target a hero. Uh, he also has his cloak again. Reroll all save rolls for attacks that target this model. And his command ability is Heads Must Roll. You can use his command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly blood letters unit wholly within 12 inches of a friendly model with this command ability. Till the end of the phase, you can reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by that unit. So you can stack your banner. So you're doing one reroll ones to hit and reroll ones to wound. That's not bad at all. Well, they just kind of need it because they hit on fours. Unless you take them in twenties, and then they hit on threes. So that's no better than rolling five. I mean, like that's a very good fifty-fifty chance instead of like five to hit. So they normally hit on fours. Yeah. So four up. But so you, you they need that. I mean like if it were five and up or six it's then they would definitely need that. Yeah. But you're also playing a game where me personally I roll like if, no matter how many dice I roll, half of them will always hit and half of them will always miss. And then half of that will always hit and always miss and so on and so forth. Karnak, the other new boyo in the hood. He has five wounds, eight move, four save, ten bravery. He has gore slick claws and three savage maws. Savage. Savage moments with Will. Dead and dense. The claws. Do four attacks, three to hit, four to wound, no ren, one damage each. Uh, mouths do six attacks, four to hit, three to wound, minus one, d3. Uh, he gets a thing where he can mark an enemy unit, same like every other blood, blood flesh hound. He gets special things. You can reroll charge rolls for this model. Always this, a good thing when you're corn to yep. reroll your charge rolls. This model can attempt to unbind one spell in the enemy hero phase in the same manner as a wizard. Same with endless spells. And if you do, you the caster suffers d3 mortal wounds. Oh, so like our helmet spike for Dark Eldar. Yeah, yeah. Except for it's on a doggo. Yeah. Wow. Much counter. A uh, specific doggo or any kind of doggo? The um, the regular flesh hounds can dispel. I don't know if they can hurt the dude, but Karnak, like the named so doggo. So specific doggo does yeah. that. Okay. Prey of the Blood God. After armies are set up, but before the first battle round begins, pick one enemy hero to be this model's quarry. Re Reroll hit and wound rolls. Made against that model. It has an ability, not a command ability, so you don't have to worry about command points. Once per game, during the hero phase, you can summon one unit of five flesh hounds to be the battle be on the battlefield and add it to your army. <coughs> Excuse me. If your army is, add it to your army. If this model is within eight inches of its quarry, the summoned unit must be set up wholly within eight inches of this model and more than nine inches from an enemy unit. The summoned unit cannot move in the following movement phase. So almost like deep strike. Yeah, it's basically deep strike. But with a down point to it. Yeah. But you're adding units to your army for free, so. Yeah, that's something. Flesh Hounds. They're basically exactly like Karnak, except for they have two wounds each. They don't have the huge fancy hunt people down, reroll all this <laughs> stuff. They can just reroll charges, and they have the, the color. You add one to the unbind dispel roll for... When you contain ten or more models, which is another thing I should say, in Corn, they added special abilities where you have to have more than a certain amount in your units now. So it says like if this unit has more than one, if this unit has more than one, do this, so on and so forth. It's no longer just a if you bought the unit you get it, and if you have more than five you do it. You lose all your abilities if you drop down to one guy. Hmm. It's kind of stupid. Caller of Corn, dispel. One in every five models can be a gore hound. Reroll charges. They're basically just giant walking flamethrowers. They're kind of like the the Tyranids one with the giant, like the little guy with the cannon on his back that's a flamethrower. Oh, pyrovore. Yeah, they're like a pyrovore. Basically what they are. That's not bad. Skullmaster. This is the guy you take to when you take Skull Taker and, the, and Scarman to take your command abilities and traits. They're basically just a pocket version of Skull Taker. Not much difference. Uh, do roll six, do mortal wounds, plus the weapon. It has brazen hoofs. That's an added weapon to itself. 
because it's on a juggernaut, so it hits juggernaut stuff. The Bloodmaster is the ground version. Uh, same kind of thing. Uh, lets you make dudes attack out of combat. Hits harder, has more health, higher leadership. Blood letters. These guys got changed. Same with a bunch of dudes' horns and banners. Blood Reaper. Add one into this unit. Can be the Blood Reaper. Add one to the attack characteristics. Standard Bearers. One in every ten models in this unit can either be a Blood Soak Banner or a Gore Drench Banner. Which you can stack. So you can have both if you have a unit of twenty. You can have one of each. Which is nice because they do things. Uh, one in every ten models. Yeah. Sort of. Blood Soaked. You can reroll. You can reroll charge rolls for this unit while it includes any blood soaked banners. Hmm. Gore drenched. The non modified battle shock roll of a one is made for this unit while this includes any gore drenched icon bearers. You can add d6 models to the unit with no models from the unit will flee in the phase. Horn blowers. It, one in every ten models in the unit can have a horn blower. While this unit includes any horn blowers, the unmodified roll for a bar battle shock test for an enemy unit. Is within eight inches of this unit is a one. The battle shock test must be rerolled. Circumstantially useful, because a lot of armies have you do not take battle shock. Yeah, it's a nice thing. If though. it was you always pass battle shock, it would be nice. But then you couldn't fail either way. It's a nice thing though, because it still means people have to roll, even if they can somehow just like, oh, if I can't like miss roll because I didn't lose enough guys, you still have to roll. It yeah. doesn't force you to roll. It just says that. Uh, well, in the game, how the rules are stated, you always have to roll because a one is always a fail or a pass, depending on the circumstance. Yeah, but Stormcast Eternals have a rule that says you do not take battle shock, so you don't have to roll. Yeah, anything. in that sentence, you wouldn't. But as so the other army, of Nagash. yeah. But every other army has some sort of mechanic where they have to so, roll. So the part. two armies that you fight against most are immune yeah, the to two, battle shock. Yeah, the two big ones are immune. And uh, what else we got? We got the decapitating blow. Roll on six inflicts one wound in addition to any other normal. And murderous tide. You can add one to the hit rolls for attacks made by this unit while it unit has at least twenty models. So yeah, most, that's pretty standard. So instead of being a four to hit, it goes up to a three to hit. Yeah, pretty standard. Blood crushers. <laughs> uh, they were the same. Uh, they're the one of the few models that says the unit of blood crushers can have any number of models, each armed with a hellblade. Um, Yep, it's the same. Uh, roll a one, re-roll. The banners are the same. Roll a one, you can add a unit back. And no units will flee. Uh, the normal hoofs, saves, movements, all that stuff is the exact same as last edition. But the blood throne and skull cannons. Blood thrones actually got buffed in this edition, so I might actually take one. That's cool. Seven wounds, eight inch move, four up save, ten bravery. Oh no, my power! Oh! Sorry, what? The power. He needs to wrap it up. He's running out of time. Oh, yeah. Rip. Their abilities are got crew and amount. We got blood throne when this model uses it. Model uses the at the double four to victory or inspiring presence, which are all some of them are basic ones. The ability has a range of twelve inch, even if the model is not the general. Hmm. So if you just have this in the army, it buffs the distance of your stuff. Gore feast. If any wounds are inflicted by this model's gnashing maw and not negated, it used to be you just had to do damage even if they saved. You can heal up to D3 wounds allocated to this model. And then of course decapitating blow. Skull cannons are about the same as last edition. Add one to hit if you're within a small unit. D6 damage. One attack, three up, three up, minus two. If you eat a eat a person in combat. You can shoot again instantly. That's not bad. Uh, Korgas Ghoul. Or Gorgas. Korgas Gal. Call, yeah, he's actually in here now. Uh, he has a bunch of rules. <laughs> of course he does. He's Korgas Gal. He has six wounds, five inch move, three plus save, nine bravery. Axe as corn. Or axe of corn. Axe as corn. Korgas Gal. Korgas Gal. Call. One inch range, three attacks, three to hit, three to wound, minus one, D3. He is compandled with Grizzle Maw, which you can take separately. Because they made him separate in, uh, in the kill team box. Thing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he's treated in the same manner as a mount for all rules purposes. So you can't give him bonuses and shit. Mm, that's uh, unfortunate. Weapons and gear. Oh, well, he hits hard. Anyways, favorite of corn. You can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by this model. 
A Quishy's Bane. So that was the fiery realm that the, they first met Corn, that the dwarfs were in. This model is eligible to fight in the combat phase if it is within 8 inches of an enemy unit instead of 3. It can move an extra 5 inch when it piles in. That's so. quite the pile in. Yeah, so Three roll your charge. Five. Don't have to roll its charge. I gotta plug it in. I think you still do. Yeah. Nope. If you're within five, it would just move in. I think you have to be locked in combat to initiate piling. Nope. This model is eligible to fight in the combat phase if it is within eight inches of an enemy unit instead of three. Okay, that changes the rules. That means you have to end your movement within an eight inch yep. mark and then you can pile into combat. Yeah, okay. Which yeah, is sure. easy to do. Color corn. Well, it can unbind one spell. <laughs> Wait, it just gets one free unbind or does it get an unbind chance? Uh, one free. Can attempt to unbind one okay, spell. Okay, can attempt to unbind. Okay, yeah. Just like a wizard. Reality splitting axe. At the end of any phase, if a wound inflicted by the model's axe of corn is phase, where allocated to enemy model is not negated, the enemy model has not been slain, roll out dice on five up, the enemy model is slain. Stayed the same. Yep. How many swings does he get with that axe now? Three. He still gets the same amount. And his command ability, Lord of the Gore Tide. And then the computer died. Little bit of a technical difficulty of power outage. Yes. Personal power outage for the laptop. Not not our apartment, no. no. Laptop died because we are hillbillies when it comes to recording. And uncultured swine. I stream on my main computer. Yeah. Our next boil, the one that got a huge, huge big change, not huge, but huge in a sense that he does something really cool now, is Scar Bloodwrath. He is the okay. named Warmonger. Oh. Wrathmonger, whatever they're called. Scar Blood Wrath. Not yeah. Scar Wrath Blood. Wounds 5, 5 inch move, 4 up save, 9 bravery. Mini Blood. Scar Brand. Mini Scar Brand, basically. Blood Sword and Blades, 3 inch range, see below for attacks, 2 to hit, 2 to win, minus 1 da ren, 1 damage each. Slaughter Storm. The attack characteristic of this model's Bloodstorm Blades is either 5 or equal to the number of enemy units within 3 inches of this model when the number of attacks are made. Depend whichever is higher. So if there's only 2, you still hit with 5s. If you're in a 10 blad, 20 man blob, right smack in the middle, you get 20 attacks. That's actually a good deal. Wow. He is also on your. He's a hero slot that is a, is a unit killer. Slaughter Storm. At the end of the movement phase, if this model has been slain... Oh, and they did bring it back. Cool. Okay. I have misspoken in the last time. Uh, roll a 2d6. On 8+, plus, you can set up this model anywhere on the battlefield more than 9 inches from any enemy units, with all wounds allocated to it removed. Command ability. Murderous Paragon. You can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, Pick one friendly Wraith Monger's unit wholly within 12 inches of friendly model with its command ability, aka only itself. Till the end of the phase. Aka <laughs> itself. If I'm, I, I haven't Love seen it. any abilities that make you use other people's abilities before. Maybe it's in an army that's upcoming. Why are you staring at me with a death stare, cat? Is this your model? Scarbrand hates doors. This is your model, it's cool and all. Just don't give me the death stare. You can use this command ability at the start of turn, Wraith Monger's wholly within 12 inches. Uh, if a model from that unit is slain before the model is removed from play, this model can make a pile and move, then attack with all the melee weapons in its ar it's armed with. Belkay the Bloody, my my girl, the waifu of corn. She um did not get touched. She is basically the same except for cheaper in points. She's she one twenty. That's weird. Well, they they changed her. She hasn't changed in the set that, that she does the same stuff. They did change her because everyone else got changed to make the rules more universal and easier to understand. So, her stats are 2 inch range, 6 attacks, 3 to hit, 3 to wound, minus 2 run, 1 damage each. She has an ability, she has a couple of abilities. She has the Gaze of Corn. You can reroll Battleshock tests for friendly Corn mortal, mortal units wholly within 16 inches. However, if you do fail again, uh, after the rerolls, Add D3 to the number of models that flee. Uh, Spear of Slothner, or however you say it, has damp characteristics of D3 instead of 1 for if the model made a charge move. Demon Shield. Subtract 1 from the wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons that target this model. And then, of course, her iconic command ability. 
You can use this command ability in the hero phase. If you do so, pick one enemy unit that can fly and is within 16 inches of a friendly model with this command ability. Till the end of the turn, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by that unit. You cannot pick the same unit to benefit this command ability more than once per hero phase. Because with command points, you can you can double tap command hero abilities, and it, so you can't do it twice on the same unit, so you can't drop them down to a minus two. Then, going to the normal dudes, Le Mighty Lord of Corn did not get touched. He's the same. He is basically a pocket coal. He's pocket cool. Call whatever you want to hit. Makes people go away into the the, the bye bye zone if you roll five. Uh, makes people charge. Blood's Crater, he got super changed. They bad touched him. Like, bad? Yes. In a, in a way, yes and no. Uh oh. They, um, you don't, you can no longer auto pass battle shocks with corn. He just gets the add one to the attack characteristics of all units wholly within 16 inches. And you uh, reroll successful for rolls for wizards within 16 inches before unbinding is made. So if they roll successful, they gotta re-roll it again, and if they still pass, then you can make them unbind. Uh, he can though. The, the trade-off is you can't you can't auto pass morale anymore, but you don't have to spend your turn being planted. He can walk with them forever. So giving him abilities and hero gear and all that stuff is actually worth it now because he has four attacks, three to, three to hit, three to wound, minus one ren, one damage each, and he has a three up armor save and five wounds. So if you you, you stack them right. You can hit hard. Lower the corner on a juggernaut. The exact same as last time. Not much really changed there. They just kind of reworded the command ability because of command points and multiple things and units and stuff. Uh, <coughs> Slaughter Priest. Um, they only have one. They have. They. Um, they only have um, uh, thingies on here now. They explain. They super explain how rolling the d sixes to do prairies work instead of just saying on a one, you do. Uh, you get if you roll a one, you get hurt, and if you, yeah. So how it works is in the hero phase, this model can chant one of the following prayers. If it does so, pick one of the prayers and then make the prayer roll for by rolling a dice. On a one, this model suffers d three mortal wounds. The prayer is not answered. Two to three, the prayer is not answered. On a four plus, the prayer is answered. And they have the same ones from last time. Bloodbind and Blood Boil. You can also attempt to summon a judgment that you bought for your army. Judge. They have a five up save, six inch move, six wounds, eight bravery. And what they did to use less pages, if a model could be, like, had two different web model profiles, like the last codex, they make it so it's all together into one. So the Slaughter Priest can have. Bloodbath Axe, so that's the big two-hander. Or it can have the Hackblade and Wrath Hammer, like the other model it has. So you just gotta basically look up the weapon profile that you have on the model. But they still have separate point cost. Actually, no, they universalized the point cost. So some of the models that were cheaper went up in price because of the extra weapons you can give it. Skull Grinder. Uh, the only thing that changed with him was they removed his blood drench ability. So where it used to be if you blood drench people they can reroll a bunch of shenanigans or get like pluses to hit and rerolls and all that stuff. If you kill the hero. It's just everyone adds one to the bravery characteristics of friendly corn mortals wholly within 12 inches of them. And um, you can pick one enemy hero or monster within 2 inches of this model and roll a dice on 2 plus the enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. So we built him to be a hero killer in the last one. They were like, okay, here's hero kill abilities. Try using the stuff on others. And we're like, yeah, no, we still want it. Inspiring Deathbringer, just like the priest, put all the different weapons and different models you could buy into one profile. Um, their command ability is actually good this game. You can use the command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick a friendly model. With the command ability until the end of the phase, add one to the attack characteristics of melee weapons used by friendly corn mortal units that are wholly within 12 inches. You cannot pick the same unit to benefit this command ability more than once per hero phase. So you can stack it by another. Exalted Deathbringers. 
actually got pretty good in this edition. They're a blood lieutenant. If this model is not your general, add two to the attack characteristics of the model's melee weapons while it's wholly within 12 inches of corn general. Demon or non-demon. If it has the shield, roll a dice each time I allocate a wound or more wound. This model is armed with a rune marked shield that will inflict it by a spell. Two plus, feel no pain. If you take the skull gor gorger, uh, if unmodified save roll for an attack, the target's a model armed with the skull gorger is a six. The attack unit suffers D3 mortal wounds after all attacks have been solved. So every time you make a save, you get a six. Keep a mark on it. At the end of the turn, it suffers that many D3 wounds. Brutal impalement. If you have the spear, if you have the impaling spear, unmodified wound roll for an attack made with the impaling spear is a six plus. The attack inflicts D3 mortal wounds on a target in addition to any normal damage. And its command is you can use its command ability Till the end of the phase, you do not have to take battle shock tests for friendly corn mortal units that are wholly within 18 inches of this model. So they moved it to this guy. So this guy is going to be now an auto included into your army. Blood Stoker stayed the same. Whips people. It's an ability, not a command ability, so you don't have to pay for it. Blood Warriors stayed the same. Um, yep, stayed, uh, the only thing that changed for them was instead of for every successful armor save, move it to the side and at the end roll and on a six you do wound. It's when you roll to make a save, and the save was a six, then you do the damage right then. Okay. Mr. Texty oh. McGee's. No one heard you. What is your thoughts so far of mm -hmm. the last four four units? It's not bad. Like the army's got some good combat <laughs> potential. The trick is you gotta make it into combat. Uh, the second is, you're going to have to learn how to stack a bunch of abilities together that you know won't be cancelled on their stack. Neat. Hey, last off on the normal guys, we got the Blood Reavers. They actually got pretty good in this edition. I was able to make them stacked properly. I had 80 attacks for a 30 man unit. Because it's... The Chieftain gets a plus one, two of their attacks. So it's one guy that hits with two attacks, everyone else hits on one, but they have an ability. Add one to the attack characteristics for this unit, melee weapon, while they're wholly within 16 inches on friendly corn totem, so that's your blood secretor. And then for every icon bearer you have, you add one to their he hero, their heroic stat. So at 30 dudes, you're at a leadership 8 instead of 5. And... So you're at two now, two to three, and you use the banner to give another plus one, so you're now at four, and then you use another stack from your hero to give a dudes another, so you're at five for your chief and four for your normal dudes, and if you have 30, you're hitting with a lot. That's true. Yeah, and then you take the <coughs> totem that basically lets you reroll ones, and then you take another thing that lets you reroll ones, stack that, so then you don't have to worry about the reaver blades that lets you reroll ones. Then you just take the gore, the meat reaper axes, which give you a random minus one. Because you use those against the skellymans, because they have a thing that if you have no rend, they get to do a bunch of cool saves. If they have rend, then they ignore it. And then the last guys, they're from the night haunt boxes and the easy to builds. Got Gorx Reavers. Uh, the only difference with them is they got one more bravery, and they have some different weapons. The only real ones to kind of look at are like Chorus's Chain Axe, which is 2 inch range D3 attacks, and that's about it. Uh, you don't have to take Battle Shock with this guy. Oh my that's God. it. Um, oh, if you roll a 6 with Gorex's Axe, it does one more wound instead. More Gorex Fiends, they're like the three man team from Night Vault that came with the Doggo. They're the same. As a normal one. Except for if you fight a Stormcast unit, you can reroll hit rolls. That's not bad. Um, that's about it. With that blood scent, you can reroll charge rolls for a unit while it is wholly within 8 inches of friendly Riptooth model. It's the dog. Riptooth is basically a pocket Karnak. Cool. He just hits a little bit harder, like Karnak does. Has a better save. Two wounds. Bravery 10, 8 inch move, cancel spell, reroll charge. Oh, oh there's more. Bullshbang, I lied. There's Wraith Mongers. Wraith Mongers stayed the same. They have this Blood Fury ability. 
uh, where they basically just the more enemies around them and more that were killed, you add more to the dice roll. Uh, Mighty Skull Crusher stayed the same. You can add two to the bravery characteristics if you have standard bear, and for every horn blower you add, you add one to the run and charge rolls made for this unit. And first murder's charge. And last but not greatest pain. What was that? Just my step stool, just locking. People are doing work around here. We have Bryce here he's stealing our internet to update all his shenanigans. Stealing? Stealing! A word. And uh, so, and Glenn's grabbing what looks like to be models from. It's called actively borrowing internet. So, we end with the, for the normal dudes, we end with the Skull Reapers because Skyla, Fengrim, and Kermagoths did not change at all. Fulgrim basically just got some better attack abilities, and that was it. Karmagos stayed the same, they just upped their points by 10. But the Skull Reapers lost all their cool special weapons and their tallying skulls thing. All it has now for the trial of skulls is you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by this unit if the target has five or more models. The rest is this, like, that's it. There's a, on a six, you do a mortal wound. That, that's it. You add one to a charge. So they removed the, the more wounds and kills you get depending on how many guys you have, you can potentially re-roll everything. And your bad. your bigger two-hand weapons that you would arm would be like demon weapons that would do like like five or six wounds per hit. Shenanigans, crazy. Having a better armor save than the Wraith Mongers. And they upped the points on these guys. They used to be about like 150, 160, like they used to be a little bit lower than they upped it by like 20 points or something like that. But, but... Don't. But you don't. know it's true. Then at the back we got the abilities of the judgments. The skulls basically make wizards impossible to cast, and if they roll certain numbers they just die. Bleeding icon burns people, it flies over, and then crushes whoever it stops by. It stops by. And the wraith axe is basically when you just say, fuck you, storm cast, and night haunts, and go away, and it just hits them like a golf club, and they go flying into the realms of corn. That's basically, and then like the Wrath of Corn Axe has like a judgment of five up, and yeah, you know, all that stuff. And then at the very end here, we have the battle profiles. So let's talk look at the Skull Take. Yeah, the Skull Taker, Slaughter Priest, Skull Reapers. They went up to 180. They used to be about 170, 160, whereas Wraith Mongers dropped to 140. And then of course all the Bloodthirsters went up to their original points before the FAQ that we got before the new Codex came out. So yeah, Volcat went down to 120. Everybody here went up to a flat like 100, except for two, which stayed at like 80. And um, all those other point costs we had changed from the last FAQ for Age of Sigmar 2nd Edition basically got added to this codex. So that's the basic rundown of the corn special rules. We might later on by myself or with Brody go through some like lore and even a, maybe like try playing a game and we'll tell you how that goes. But I'm going to now close the show, get the final reviews from Bryce and Glenn, and if they want to plug anything, they can do that. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Hmm. Buy more corn units. Yes. Any particular that you liked or any combos you can think of? Uh, I've always appreciated corn for the larger monsters. And right now, they look to be stacking up to be some really vicious ones, which isn't too bad. But there are a couple units in there that on the stack are devastating. I'd recommend picking up the Corn Codex just to learn all about them. But for somebody who wants to start an army mm. of corn, I, w I would buy the Codex and mix a bunch of stuff around to get exactly what you need out of it. Yeah. I would highly suggest with the changing of rules, get that starter box that comes with the Blood Reavers. And your totem guy and Kamara's call as a good starter, and then buy some blood warriors on the side. So they're pretty strong. Or even just gain the corn blood letters start collecting box would get you even stronger dudes, and you just model one of the extra dudes as a blood master. That's true. Or I think it does come with the No, it comes with the throne. Give it the throne. The throne's really good. So yeah, there's uh, definitely a lot of guys who've played with these different units running uh, running a pure army now, either of demons or humans, or having one player on your team be humans and the other player being demons, is now how the codex is. It is split. It's not this podgepodge granddaddy that we wanted. 
which is disappointing and super nerfing some models and super buffing some others to kind of make it different but not different at the same time was harsh. Don't say it. You know it's true. Don't say it. You know it's true. Fine, you can say it once because we're your closing statement. Freaking says the Leave storm. Leave it alone. Says the stormcast player. Anyways, let's with the closing of videos, we're gonna go. We'll see you guys in the next video. We're gonna go play some games. Mm -hmm. That would be really nice. Bye bye.